In today's video, you're going to learn how to create a scroll animation for a website using the Intersection Observer API, which will allow us to unscroll, detect where the page is, and then trigger some sort of animation. Of course, this website will be completely responsive, and you will also have the entire code down in the description below. As you can see, we will also have a navigation bar which will be responsive. Now, we're not going to work too much on this, we're actually going to concentrate on our intersection observer and make our animations slide in from the left and the right and also have a little bit of delay. I'm going to show you how you can achieve this part later on in the video. As always, you can find the code down in the description below by visiting my blog and also you can check out my podcast if you wish so. So with this being said, my name is Norbert BM and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel and share this video with others. Now, without any further ado, let's get into the video. I'm going to leave the project, the finished project opened up on the right side. And I just created an empty folder and within here. We're going to create an index.html file, then shift one for exclamation mark. And that will trigger us the boilerplate. And from here on, I'm going to copy in a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to copy in the CDN link, which you can find down in the description below. Then I'm going to link up our style.css, give the project the name of scroll animated website. Above the last body tag, I'm going to link up above the that body tag, we're going to link up a script. This will be the script for the navigation. Now the navigation part I did do in a previous video, and you can check it out using the link down in the description. I'm not going to concentrate at all on that part of the project because you already did it. But if you wish to check it out, then please visit, visit the previous project. This will be the nav.js file and just going to copy and paste it in here. If you wish to check it out, then please feel free to do so. Next up, let's create a style.css and also let's launch our website by right clicking and open it with live server. Now we can't see anything, so let me just copy in the navigation bar. Next, let's copy in the header. And next I'm going to copy in the multiple sections of the web page. Okay, now let's move on to our style.css file. And within here, we're going to copy in the style of the website for the navigation and the header section. Okay, and this should already work. Next up, let's concentrate on the intersection observer. For this, I will style our sections. So let's type in here comment sections and let's grab onto all of the sections and let's display them as flex, which will then help align all of the sections and all of its content in a center position. So let me close up the left bar, make our code editor a bit smaller, and we're just going to simply change the flex direction into a column direction. We're going to justify the content to center and align the items to center. Now, as you saw in our finished project, we have for each section a, a complete viewport height at, for its height. This is why when we're reaching our sections by scrolling down to them, the intersection server will be triggered and only then the sections will slide in. So let's go to our project again and give each section a min height of 100 viewport heights. Now you can see that each section has 100 viewport height as its container. You could also have just a bit of a padding, a all or, you could also add just a bit of a padding of zero top and bottom and 10 viewports left and right in order to have just a bit more space. Next up, we're going to target our height class from the sections. This class is a class that will hide all of our sections when the intersection observer is not observing them. So for this, we're going to go into our CSS, target the height class, and we're going to set the opacity to zero. And, and we're also going to give it a transition of all two seconds and ease out. As you can see, as on a simple refresh, all of the section will be hidden. Now I also want them to come in from the left side. So what we're going to do is transform and translate on the X axis. We're going to translate them to the left side by giving them 100% and we're going to slide out 100% to the left. Now, in order to bring them back, we're going to use a animate-in class. And when this class will be active, then the opacity will be transformed back to one and the transform translate on the X axis will be zero. So we're going to be pushed back to their initial position. I'm going to comment out this hidden class and I'm going to change every second section to have a background of dark and a color of white. So for this, we're going to target all of our sections and use the nth selector. We're going to select all of the odd children. So every second one. 
And now we can change the background color to a hash 333 and a color of hash EEE. -E -E. Now every second class, now every second section will have a dark background. Next I'm going to activate the height class, which will hide our sections. And now we can create a new JavaScript file, which we're going to call animate.js. Within here, we're going to create a new variable using const. We're going to call it observer. And we're going to assign this variable to a new intersection observer object. Now the intersection observer API provides a way to asynchronously observe changes in the intersection of the target element. We're going to target here using a callback function all of our elements. So elements. And now we're going to grab onto all of these elements and use a for each loop. We're going to loop over them and grab onto each element on its own. So not elements, but element. And now we can condition that element that if that element dot is intersecting with the viewport, then the element dot target that is intersected dot class list is going to add to it the animate the dot animate class to it. Else, if the target, if the element dot target, so if the targeted element dot class list is not intersected, then we're going to remove the class again in order for the element to be hidden again. So remove the class of animate in. And now we can, in order to demonstrate this, because this will result in a Boolean, we're going to just console log, it should be actually up here. We're going to console log each and every element when they're intersected. Now let's go back to our HTML and we need to add this element JS file to our HTML. For this, we're going to scroll up to the top and we're not going to add it to the bottom, but we are going to add it before the title using a script tag as a source animate.js and we're going to use the defer property. Now the defer property, as you can see, is a Boolean attribute and it's set to indicate to the browser that the script is meant to be executed after the document has been parsed but before firing the DOM content loaded. So by using the deferred element, we're going to see that the intersection observer, and now we can actually inspect console log. Now we need to go back to our animated JavaScript file, and we need to grab onto all of the classes that we want to target or add that observer to them. So let's go ahead, go to the document, use query selector, select all, because we're going to select all of the classes that have the class hide, and then we're going to loop over them using a for each loop and for each animate element, we're going to take the observer and dot observe each element, animated element. And there we go. Now you can see if I scroll down, it's going to observe each and every element. And I should put in here dot, sorry about that. Now if we scroll down each time a element is intersected, it's going to be shown on our screen. Also, if we scroll up, you will see that the element was removed and it's going to be intersected again and the animation will work again. Okay, the last thing I want to add here is take care of a delay property for our HTML, CSS and JavaScript icons. If you take a look in our HTML, you will see that in the second section, you will have a UL with some LIs. Each LI will contain a different icon using Font Awesome's icon. Now also these have the class of height. So if you go back to our CSS and grab onto the section, and if the section has an UL, then we're going to display it as flex in order to display them in a row. Now we need to add a bit of gap in between them and increase the font size. Also, let's add a margin to the bottom, first of all. So margin bottom of two RAM. Now let's increase our font size by increasing it with to five RAM. And let's add a gap of 15 viewport widths, and there we go, we should have enough space between those elements. Now in order to add a delay to them, first of all, let's select each of them individually. For this, we're going to go to the section, select the UL, the LI, and now let's select nth child, and let's select the very first one. First, let's change this color. We're going to change the color of the icon to a orange red. As you can see, this is working. The first color, the first item will change its color. In order to add a delay to it, we're going to use the transition dash delay property. And we're going to add a delay of one second to the very first element. Now in order to change all of the elements, I'm going to just copy and paste, change it to two, three. In order to select the second and the third child, change the colors to blue and yellow. 
and let's increase the delay to 0.1 second and 0.2 seconds. Now let's hit a refresh and if you go down to a screen, you should see the elements animate in with a slight delay. Of course, you can play around with them and increase or decrease the transition delay property. And there you go. This is how you can use the intersection observer in order to create a scrolled animated website. Hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any kind of questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And with this being said, have a lovely day and catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye.